continue to whip around. You mentioned Purdue. Uh, it won at Iowa. The biggest news actually of Iowa related. Good, good job on Purdue. They continue to, to rack up the wins. Uh, but the biggest Iowa news was Caitlin Clark getting into a collision after Iowa got beat on the road at Ohio State and a fan bumped into Caitlin Clark and um, I was out and about doing family stuff. So thank God I missed this discourse. But apparently this turned this this started as oh my God, is the most famous college basketball player okay into Caitlin Clark's a massive flopper, et cetera, et cetera. Um, <laughs> so thank God I missed all of that. And in all sincerity, like obviously, um, thank God she's okay. Uh, and that there it wasn't anything bad, but, uh, but yeah, it was, it was an accidental, uh, boom, boom, uh, bang, bang play, I guess. And, uh, every, every, everything was all good and copacetic, but I figure we at least must mention it's, it, of course, nearly and, and just, what would have been the biggest non NFL headline of the weekend had Caitlin Clark is suffered a, an actual injury. That's right. I think we've got the video and what you'll see is her trying to get off of the court. And then she is, I understand like bumped into is one way of putting it run into by a larger person was another way to put it. Let, let's just watch it. We can look at it together. Okay. Boom. If that's uh that's a moving it, screen dead leg that it looks like here's what what's weird about this and i didn't catch the game live was again doing some family stuff there's already an assembly on the court at this point so i don't know if if they had gone through handshake lines and then caitlin clark's just looking to get out of there it wasn't a, like a massive she also wasn't uh, she wasn't playing frogger there and bobbing and weaving as, as like a huge flood of people it was just it happened to be she started sprinting ahead of her teammates and then someone else was eager to get out there just a just a little bit of a weird scene that's all do you ever have this i because I, I walk a lot in new york right back and forth to the studio i got about a 13 minute walk you know a few times a week yeah. and every once in a while you'll get in a situation where on a sidewalk and there's two people walking like this yeah two two ships passing each other in the night yes but one person like we are on a collision course We've had this discussion on the show before, I'm pretty sure. Yes. Okay, but it happened to me like three days ago, and it was a woman. And we made eye contact. We're about 10 feet away from each other, and we're, we're, we're on a collision course. And, I'm, and I, it becomes increasingly clear to me that she is not going to move, that the only way to avoid bumping her is to actually step out of my way. And I had this half-second moment where I was like, you know what? I should not. I should stand my ground. And then I was like, no, I'm not going to just bump into somebody, a stranger. That's crazy. It's on you. It's on but, you to move. I know, but why do – why – if I would not have moved, I don't think she would have moved, and that bothered me. <laughs> okay. Because I felt like she was willing to have a collision with me. Uh, well, you dodged her, Clay. Clay and I feel like if I wouldn't have moved, she would have said, hey, why would you just walk into me? But I would have had just a right to say, hey, why did you just walk into me? that's 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 the new york way. i'm walking here i'm walking here that's the new york way man that's just how it goes that's what I you just don't do. think it's, i think both I'm of walking you walking here i think anytime you're headed for a collision both people out of a out of a, a courtesy should swerve slightly in different directions so that you both show each other you're making an attempt to not hit each other you're doing equal work i think that's fair all right fair fair enough let's continue yeah, well, with... let me let me say this did you see okay. Um, Fox Sports, I believe, because oh, we should say Caitlin Clark after the game. She said, I was a little scared, but I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. And then Fox Sports retweeted a clip from Matt Painter from earlier in the year, I think when Purdue lost at Nebraska. Nebraska. Yes. Okay. You saw this then. First off, Matt I says, that. I remember Painter's comments when he said, We keep getting our, so, you know, I'm about to say this. So sorry for interrupting you. No, no, he I said, all We the keep time, getting our, right now. We keep. <laughs> We keep getting uh, court stormed, and can we just have a better job of like organizing? He said something like that, so I'm assuming that's what was right. Right. Um, he actually said, I didn't realize this. Tell me if you realize this. He said every one of our freshmen, sophomore, and juniors have never lost a road game without having the court stormed. Yeah, and then someone uh, said that that's actually technically not true. There was one time. Uh, so he's a liar. He's a liar. I think, right. was it Indiana last year? Indiana didn't, didn't do it, but uh, with the exception of one game. But otherwise, yes, they, they, every time they've lost on the road in Big Ten, they've been court stormed. Indiana should have. Well, that's blue blood program. Wasn't it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. No, that's, why, that's why it doesn't happen. Blue blood. On one hand, you're the fourth best program in your state. You want to storm the court when you beat the best. On the other hand, you're supposed to be a blue blood. You can't do it. Can tough do. situation. It's a tough thing to balance. So what Matt said after he got through lying. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what Matt said was, uh, hey, listen, he said something that I have said for years and wrote nine years ago which is, can we all agree? Tell me this. Okay, let's, since we're having fun with hypotheticals today, here's one for you. Caitlin Clark gets run over. 
and she is laughing. Okay, she hits her head on the court. Bam. Okay. Now she's concussed. All right. Yeah. She's a modern day Tua. Okay. Now. See that coming? All right. What are? Well, you remember he used to get concussed. I'm aware. I'm aware. Keep going. Okay. So that's what's going on. Would we? Would we start tomorrow? Would the Big Ten start putting in policies? As like start talking about it tomorrow. Would we all be having a national conversation about court storming tomorrow if Caitlin Clark was seriously hurt? Well, we are having a national conversation because this is a national podcast, so we are having that now. But had she been injured, it completely changes uh, okay. the situation. So the- just pull, what Paris about to say is we shouldn't have to wait until that happens to have that conversation. I don't necessarily disagree with you. I also don't think, uh, having seen this work in other places, having proper court storm protocol and prepare for it, hey, it, we're having, you know, it's not a... <laughs> Listen, if, if you're Cincinnati and you beat TCU, I understand how you can't possibly prepare for that because who could ever think your kids would want to storm the floor after beating TCU, as we saw a few nights ago. But if you've got a top 10 team coming in and you think, hey, well, let's be real here. Can we set proper protocols in place? Because it can be done, but the Big Ten has not gotten it done yet. And I wonder, I, I don't wonder, I bet you, because of what Painter said and now with Clark stuff, I bet you that uh, Tony Petiti, that commissioner, that there will be discussions on this sooner rather than later. Now. I have long said, and it is true, because I, I I realize somebody's going to say this. Hey, Paris, you wrote a column nine years ago saying one day something really bad is going to happen on a high-profile game. And guess what? It's been nine years, buddy. I got you. <laughs> I been- got you. But it is untrue that these things never lead to disasters. There's a guy in a wheelchair right now who was paralyzed during a court storming. Now, you don't know his name. Neither do I. You don't. There know was the also game. a guy in a wheelchair who did court storm at NC State famously, and we gave him shine on the pot a few years. I back. know that's the problem. Is that sometimes this is awesome? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, and there's another person in the middle of a game, Arkansas State Saturday. I don't mean to get off track. Yes, 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 yes. Got under the court with an I love milf shirt. I don't even See? know what that was about. <laughs> okay, here's my rule. Okay, listen, I'm I'm trying to figure out how to stay consistent with this and not contradict myself. Here's my rule. If you're in a wheelchair, go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> If you're in a wheelchair, knock yourself out, man. I don't care. But but able able bodied people should not be on the court unless they are participating in the game. In all seriousness, what Matt said is well, eventually something very bad is going to happen in a high profile game, and then we will all do something about this. We'll say we can't do this anymore. So why what are we waiting on? You know? Yeah. Like you don't you don't wait till you have a stroke to start taking cholesterol pills, dead leg. Okay. You don't wait till you have a heart attack to start taking blood pressure pills, if that's what that means. So why are we waiting until something really bad happens in a high-profile game to do what we know we're going to do when something really happens, really bad happens in a high-profile game? Why wouldn't we go ahead and eliminate the possibility? I know what people are saying. Hey, GP, how would you do it? This is what I suggested nine years ago. You just make the punishment clear and you enforce it. You, you don't need a million security guards. That's what people say. You're just going to line the court with security guards? No. You know what you're going to do? You're going to tell everybody there, if you come onto this court after this game, you'll be arrested. If you're a, 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 a normal fan, if you're a student, you will be expelled. Don't do it. And if they do it, then arrest them and, and, and expel them. And then guess what? People will go, well, geez, I can't get expelled from school just to run onto a court. I won't do that anymore. Would, Done. Would that would that work? Yes, it would. Expel what? you. You let you let Nebraska storm the court. You got, you got and then expel got eighty students. Expel you got eighty students. It'll never happen again. He doesn't take it off and can't be identified on camera. Then what do you got? Oh, we can identify him with, with the horse mask. You know, yes, <laughs> that's what happens there. Or a bunch of uh, V for Vendetta masks. Just a bunch yes, of students just throwing them okay. on there. Uh, the only people there who are, are uh, there are loopholes. The only people who are. Um, Immune from suspension or or, or being exp- uh, for being expelled or arrested would be people in wheelchairs and people in horse mask. 